Welcome to the number one show and the source of truth for all things medtech. Here, we reveal the secrets and stories behind the investments, science, and commercialization of the medtech industry. Every week, we'll take you on a wild ride with the biggest names in the game, from entrepreneurs and investors who are shaking up the market, to healthcare providers who are revolutionizing the way we think and practice medicine. So hold on tight and get ready for a journey like no other. This is the State of MedTech. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. So I realized something when I was checking out my analytics, which was some of my episodes, like I think in my of all my episodes, we've done over 50 of them, anywhere from three to four, depending on the platform of the top 10 episodes are these sales episodes, where essentially, it's just me talking. <laughs> and uh, I think many of you have reached out to me saying that you really like these episodes where I cover specific topics. So I'm going to do more of them. Um, and I even uh, invested more on uh, my end to get more help with publishing these podcasts. So you can expect that we're going to be publishing anywhere from two to three more episodes a week, right? So lots of content. And so today's topic, again, sales is about driving product adoption. Okay. And if you really want to level up in your career as a salesperson, whether you decide to be um, in capital sales or a rep, you know, for your entire career, which many people do, nothing wrong with that, or you want to get into management, maybe consulting, who knows what it could be. Understanding the psychology of, of, of money and product adoption is going to serve you well. And so how does that involve CMS and open payments? Well, for many of you, you may not have ever heard of open payments. This is going to be the best gift that I give you maybe for a few weeks. I, I'm going to give you guys a lot of value. And before I do that, of course, I got to do a quick plug. If any of you are interested in learning more about the Medical Sales Network Effects program, we're getting some amazing results. We're covering a lot of topics, not just on how to sell through LinkedIn, but things like how to use ChatGPT to improve your sales messaging, how to do email persuasion, all that. Check the show notes below or just go to my website, kativenco.com and apply. And maybe you're not ready to take that big leap. Um, maybe you just want something nice and quick for the weekend, you know, to level up. If so, go to upgrademylinkedin.com and check out my mini course there. It's a kind of a gateway drug to all my other products. A lot of people love it. It's one of my more uh, popular courses. And of course, because it's a mini course, you can do it, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. So what is open payments? So open payments is a national disclosure program. Uh, from the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, uh, that pr essentially promotes a more financially transparent and accountable healthcare system. What does that mean? Well, if you know about the Stark Law and Sunshine Act, right, we can look those up on your own time. Essentially, what it means is that, you know, you have to report everything that a physician, you know, you pay out a clinician, right? And for a long time, this was uh, on uh, CMS's website, which is uh, open paymentsdata.cms.gov, right? Um, and just recently, I talked to uh, the good folks over, over at CMS, and they let me know that not only are physicians now under there, but they've added teaching hospitals, but also non-physician practitioners, otherwise known as NPPs. Uh, and some of those people are physician's assistants, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, certified nurse anesthetists, and anesthesiology assistants and certified nurse nursing midwives. So why is this important? When it comes to medical sales and driving product adoption, you have to understand the psychology of incentives and money, whether you like it or not. And so using open payments data, right, to understand where a clinician is getting paid, where their incentives are, where their biases will not only help you understand how you can drive product adoption, but more importantly, where you should not spend your time. Because if you're trying to sell and drive adoption with a clinician who has a bias towards a certain company or product, you essentially are wasting your time, right? And so that's what this whole, uh, this whole episode is going to be about. Now, if you're watching this, uh, if you're on Spotify or YouTube, you can essentially watch this. I'm going to do a screen share so you can see what this database looks like. If you're on Apple or any other platform, sorry, you can't. You won't be able to see, you have to go on YouTube or Spotify, but I'm going to do my best to describe everything. So that being said, let me do my screen share and hop over to open payments. All right, here we go. So we're going to start off at openpaymentsdata.cms.gov. Okay. 
me personally, I would always keep this as a tab, even on your phone. So when you're in the hospital at a conference, like you can quickly look up, who, you know, who you're dealing with. Now, for context, how much data is in here? A lot. So it dates all the way back to 2015. Okay. And it accounts for $63 billion. Okay. So $63 billion was paid out by pharma companies, by uh, med device companies, biotech, et cetera, to clinicians. Okay. And about 78.8 million uh, uh, records were published. All right. Now, when you're on there, okay, um, you can see, you have three choices. You can look people up as an individual provider. You can look up a teaching hospital and a company. So let's start out with the one that most people are going to be really interested in, which is, okay, I can look up my company. Yes, you can look up your company. And so just for context, you know, I pulled up some interesting ones. So of course, the one that spends the most money is also the world's largest med device company, which is Medtronic. So they so they have different accounts. They have Medtronic Neurovascular, Medtronic this that, Medtronic Inc. The main one, right? Uh, paid out one hundred and forty one million dollars last year. Okay, and in general payments and in research payments, they did fifty one million dollars. Okay, now as you scroll down, you can see a breakdown. Right, so general payments by the nature of payment in 2021, you have things like royalty or license, acquisitions, comprehensive services, um, uh, other than consulting. So that's like speaking, uh, doing doing an educational program, right? Food and beverage, consulting fees, right? Um, you know, debt forgiveness. It's very important to start clicking on these, understanding like how do you how do you qualify what which is which? Like for example, there's one that says a gift. $328 was paid out as a gift. Okay, what, what qualifies as a gift? Gift is a general category, which includes ent uh, anything that the entity provides to a covered recipient that does not fit another nature of payment category. So anything else, and they have a lot of categories. If it doesn't fit there, it goes under gift. Okay, now, the other interesting thing you can see on uh, the company's profile is the top recipients receiving general payments, right? And so, for example, I won't mention the physician's name, but you can go and look, in, look it up on, on Open Payments. The top paid physician by Medtronic was paid $22 million last year. Now, it's important to understand why, why was that much paid out? Well, about 99% of that came from a royalty or license. So this is a physician who actually came up with something, right? Who, who developed a technology, licensed it out to, to Medtronic. Right. And I'm going to come back to that to sort of dive into details as to how you should interpret that. Let's look at a couple other interesting uh, companies. Intuitive Surgical. Now, the more you read these reports, the more educated you're going to be about how companies work. Okay. And again, is this glamorous work? Absolutely not. But you know what? For those of you who are sports fans, Bill Be Belichick, the, you know, uh, uh, football coach over the New England Patriots won multiple Super Bowl titles, right? Do you know how he got his start? He got his start by studying the thing that everybody hated to do, which was boring, which is film. That's what he used to leverage up, okay? So this database is open to all of you. Start leveraging these tools, like get ahead, right? In 2023, the modern salesperson, the modern sales team, those who win are the ones who are going to have the best data, the best insights, and the ones who take extreme action on leveraging them, right? Think about when you deal with the marketing team or your CEO. The first question they, they should be asking is like, are you as a salesperson, are you as a sales team leveraging all the tools at your disposal to sell? And most of you are not. That's okay. That's why you're listening to this show. The people who are listening to this show are in the top 1% of salespeople. You are. Maybe your quota does not reflect that yet, but you are on the right path. Okay. Now let's keep going. Intuitive Surgical in 2021 paid out $53 million. Okay. In general payments. Now here's what in what's interesting compared to a lot of other companies. Intuitive's nature of payments are, are completely different. All right. So again, if we looked at Medtronic's, uh, what percentage was it? 43% was paid out to royalty and licenses. 22% uh, to acquisitions, right? And then 13% to uh, compensation for services other than consulting. So usually it's like speaking engagements, everything. Intuitive, on the other hand, 61% of what they paid out, which is $32 million, is to what? Education. 
Very interesting. And this should tell you about strategy. So if you look at Medtronic, Medtronic is a huge company. They have contracts, they have bundles. So, you know, no offense to Medtronic, but like they have the leverage of like maybe a technology that is good, but their sales team doesn't have to leverage on selling that one technology. They can bundle payments, uh, bundle contracts together. They, they have a lot of levers to pull. And Intuitive, Intuitive is a big company. They got levers to pull, but they got to sell like one technology. Right? They don't have like implants and everything and things to bundle together. And so what's interesting is that Intuitive's approach is like, hey, let's take the you know industrial model to education, which is get them early and, and educate, you know, educate people to how you want them to be when they become adults, right? So they've put the most of their money into uh, you know, companies like uh, not company hospitals like Memorial Herman Memorial Herman got uh eight hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars from Intuitive, right? This is all for education for their for their residents and everything. You have, and, and, and this should tell you something, by the way, in terms of like strategy. So in 2021, the number one um, recipient from Intuitive who received $1.12 million was the, uh, it was Board of Trustees of the University, which is based in Chicago. I'm not sure that may be a general university. I think that might be for like all the universities in, in, in Illinois. But then after that, I have Memorial Herman, Hartford Hospital, UCSF. Advent Health Orlando, right? Should tell you a lot. Okay. Very interesting. And now one more company before we get into how you should interpret this when you deal with physicians. Okay. Stryker Corp. Stryker paid out $112 million in 2021. Okay. And again, similar to Medtronic, larger company, right? And so the majority of their payment went out to uh, uh, royalty and license. So $66 million was paid out to royalty and license. So it's like 59.4%. Right after that, nineteen percent consulting fee. Okay, and again, when you go to Stryker, you, you'll see just like Medtronic, a lot of what they paid out was to individuals, right, for royalties, licenses, patents, etc. Okay, now how do you interpret um, how do you interpret uh, these findings when it comes to a physician? Okay, I'm going to start with uh, uh, a few physicians and a couple of teaching hospitals. Okay, so. Let's look at this physician. This physician got paid out $22 million in, in 2021, okay? The majority of that came from Medtronic, okay? And it came in the form of a royalty and license. How do you interpret this? Well, if I was a company or a salesperson or a marketer trying to drive product adoption with this person, okay? Obviously, um, you know, they're not going to be interested in like little little things like consulting and everything. Maybe they are, right? But this person, you know, they made $118,000 from consulting last year. So maybe they're looking to expand more of that. But this is probably somebody who values their time. They're going to want something like, again, a little bit more uh, more, more insight, insightful, right? Such, or, in, uh, or inciting, like, like, uh, like, uh, like equity in a company, right? Um, they're going to be interested in, you know, things that maybe money can't buy, right? So for example, if your company has like an educational series, right? Maybe you have a podcast, unfortunately, many med tech companies don't. If you're able to give this person like more uh, exposure to the industry and say, hey, we'll get you, we'll, we'll put you on, uh, on in the spotlight, you get more exposure, more opportunities. Like maybe that's interesting. This is, this is the kind of person that you really have to understand what is motivating to them. And sometimes you have to just ask them directly when you're talking to them and say, hey, you know, doctor, like, look, you, you know, you've had a successful career. You're doing, you're doing quite well. What, what's, what's valuable to you? What's most important for you in engagement, right? And they'll tell you, right? The other thing is, I would work hard to get this person, depending on what it is, to you to to be an advisor, even. Why? Because if they can get twenty two million dollars out of Medtronic, you better believe that they know more than more than one thing on how to position and present a compelling offer to a large strategic so that's the strategic adopts it and pays out right so if i was a ceo and i'm seeing somebody like this i'm like how do we get how do we pay this guy to consult how do we maybe get them as an advisor how do we get them bought into the company with equity so they are they are they are more motivated to put the company in a position right these days one of the reasons why i like medtech is that medtech companies most if not all medtech companies are built to do one of two things, stay private and get acquired or go public and get acquired. It is very difficult to stay as a standalone med tech company for the long term, right? Especially, and this is not just in med, med, medicine, right? 
we're entering a, 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 we've entered an era about five years ago called the third wave of technology. I'll do an episode on explaining this, but essentially in the third wave of technology, no single company is going to be able to do big things by themselves. I mean, look, even Amazon, right, has partnered with other companies. The reason why these huge companies partner up together, right, is because you're going to go farther together than by yourself, right? And so that all being said, right, this is why it's important to tie yourself up to somebody who knows what they're doing. One of the mistakes that a lot of salespeople do when it comes to a startup is finding a, a really great technology enthusiast, somebody who loves the, the technology, is like all about it. And then because they're a big user, the CEO is excited like, hey, let's give this person more equity, okay? But let's give them an advisory seat. Bad idea because that person who might be really good at advising you on product and everything the first year or two of your company, three, four, five years down the line, you've given up an advisory seat to this person and they're not going to be that useful when it comes to, hey, how do we position this company so that we can get a strategic partnership or a strategic acquisition, right? So as a salesperson, okay, thinking at this level, especially if you're in a startup, right, this can be baked into your deal. Right, So that when you present it to your CEO, when you present it to your sales team, you say, hey, not only am I thinking about my deal here, but here's why I'm going to put more emphasis on this deal. Because if we get this person, they're going to help this company with this, this, that, and the other. Right, That's how you need to think about these things. Okay, Now, let's go to another physician. So here's a physician who has a little bit more of an interesting mix. So in 2021, again, they made good money, $329,000, but a much more interesting spread. This physician made... $200,000 from education, right? All right. Uh, compensation for services other than consulting is the second highest. So 60% they made from education, 21% from things like speaking engagements, courses, etc. So, and then, you know, consulting fees, uh, they only made 390 bucks. So what should that tell you about this? This physician is clearly interested in education, training. That's their strong suit. Right. And again, you should never make these assumptions. You should just ask. Right. But again, it gives you more information to deal with. Now, here's the other thing. Let's say that you're a capital salesperson. Let's say you work for Census or um, CMR or one of the other surgical robotic companies that are, di that are directly competing with, with Intuitive. This is not a good person to target. You know why? Because $328,000. Okay, $328,000 of the $329,000 they made in, in 2021 came from Intuitive Surgical. Wrong person to go after. I know a lot of you, you know, will get upset about this because maybe you look at this database and you come to the realization that this one physician that you're engaged with or you're trying to get a hold of is like got a bias in the wrong direction towards a competitor. You're better off knowing that so that you do not waste your time, right? The most important thing as a salesperson is knowing where to spend your time, okay? And so that's how you have to think about these things, right? When it comes to deal rips, okay? And again, if you're interested in being in the next deal rip, we do these live deal rips. Everything's anonymous. You get a lot of feedback and insight from the top salespeople in the world or top sales leaders, that is. Um, go to dealrip.com and submit your deal there. But anyways... This shows a higher level of thinking, right? When you say, "Hey, um, he, you know, if you're if you're being if one of the big hospitals in your backyard, this is a surgeon there, you can say, "Hey, we're going to target this hospital. Here's why we're not going to deal with this one physician." Okay, this is why you can say, "Okay, this physician works at I don't know if it if it shows here. It shows it shows uh, where they're located, but not ho which hospital affiliation they are. You can figure that out easily. But you can say, "Hey, look." Here's why when we penetrate this one hospital, we're not going to deal with Dr. XYZ because it, intuitive is in their pocket. And so in order to combat that, we need to go after these two fellows and this other uh, junior attending, right? Strength in numbers, easier to get to, not biased towards our competitor. I can go after this person at some point. Maybe we'll be able to convert them. But let me tell you what, guys, converting somebody away from money, right? There's only one way to do that. More money up front or more potential money down the line. Okay. And this is one thing that I would say is that maybe that's one way you can, you can, you can persuade this person, right? The one way you can persuade them is perhaps by positioning the story of like, Hey, and again, I always tell you guys, 
using imagination is one of the most powerful forms of persuasion. You can say, look, Dr. So-and-so, you know, intuitive is a great company. It's a great technology, but you know, they've, they've already sort of made their place in the market. We're creating a completely different category. Imagine being one of the early adopters for our technology five years from now, even if we penetrate and hit 50% of the goals we have, you know, things like that, you have to use the imagination and the visionary side of it. If you're dealing with somebody who's a true early adopter, meaning that they're, they are a tech enthusiast or a visionary, those are the two categories that fit early adopter. They can see the future with their eyes closed and that language will resonate with them. If, it, if that's not the kind of person they are, it's just not going to work and you move on. Okay. Now, Let's look at a couple other interesting ones that I found. Okay. So this physician made $60,000 in 2021 through 144 payments. Okay. And a majority of it is consulting, right? Some royalty and licensing. So 21,000 from royalty and license, uh, 33,000 from consulting. So this person, right. And they have a, they have a big mix. A lot of people who get paid out a lot of money, like the person I just talked to earlier, Got all their money from one company. This person has one, two, three, four, five. It looks like seven or eight different companies paying them out, right? So they have no loyalty to anybody. Maybe they have a loyalty to these two top companies. One is SI Bone and one is Life Spine, right? But they can be they they could be reached, they could be persuaded, right? And they definitely could be making more money. Okay. Now, the idea of money in medicine is a very touchy topic, but here's my thing. If you're a physician, or if you're if this is how I justify it to the public personally, and you know you shouldn't be having this, this these talks with people outside of medicine, but if you're a clinician and you're helping a company with driving the adoption of technology through your through your insights, through uh, your 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 experience, these things, you should be compensated. I, me personally, I'm very pro. Doctors should make more money. Clinicians, nurses, physician assistants, they should make more money, right? That's how innovation drives forward. It's, there's got to be some financial benefit to people. Otherwise, they're not going to do it, right? But this person can be influenced because you can say, hey, you know what? Looks like they're, 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 they're taking a lot of uh, payments. Not enough, obviously, you know, and they could be doing better. Look, if we look at total, how much have they made total? Over the period of, of five or six years, they made $510,000, right? It's not a lot if you're consult, you know, if you're uh, doing it, engagements and everything. Now, of those payments, you got to see that $107,000 was paid out to research payments and then associated research funding, there's $13,000. So like this person has an interest for these things, right? So now you have some data as to, hey, here's how I should look into this. Like they got $107,000 for research payments. Go look up their research studies. What were the three to five last publications they did, right? On LinkedIn and Twitter. What kind of things are they talking about engaging with right now? You're building a case of persuasion so that when you go, whether it's through an email or you happen to go to the hospital and see them in person, you actually know what you're going to do. You know what levers to pull. This is the biggest problem in our industry. Too many cowboys, right? And cowgirls, you know, shooting from the hip, right? The art of the sale. Let me just run into them and I'm just going to do my thing. Waste of time, my friends. Sharpen the axe, spend hours and hours. You're going to chop down a tree, spend eight hours sharpening that axe and five minutes chopping down the tree. Too many of you go up to these trees, these deals with a dull axe and spend eight hours trying to chop it down. Meanwhile, the people who use data, use insights, right? Maybe they spend eight hours sharpening that axe. They chop that tree down in five minutes. They're on to the next thing. Faster than you. This is the key to scaling deals, right? The key to scaling deals is knowing where to put your focus on, where you're going to spend your daily and weekly activity, and you move on, right? Now, outside of that, let's look at a, a couple couple more. Again, like like this person right here, okay? Uh, so this this physician... $4.8 million through acquisition from Stryker. Now, are they approachable? You bet they are. Why? The acquisition money is a one time, usually it's a one time payment, but let's say it's a royalty. You're going to get paid over time. That, that money is going to be there no matter what. If it was consulting, right? 
maybe that's a threat to them. Maybe your competitor is Striker or something, and their thing is like, hey, if I start consulting for a competitive company, Striker is going to be pissed, and they're going to they're going to reduce my consulting fees. They're going to reduce my consulting time, right? But if they're already paid, hey, they're a free agent as far as I'm concerned, right? So go after them again. This is how you have to think. You know, the more you're able to think like the customer you're about to talk to, to understand their desires, their fears, their pain, right? The more levers you have to pull and then the better of an experience that you're going to provide selling to them, okay? Now, let's look at one last thing, which is teaching hospitals, okay? So I'm going to pull up... Uh, two teaching hostels from the great state of Texas, just because they happen to be there. Actually, I'm going to gr grab one from California as well. So let's look at Memorial Herman. So Memorial Herman got $1.2 million in general payments and $31,000 in research payments. Okay. Now, where did that money mainly come from? Right? So a lot of it came from space rental or facility fees. Okay. So they're, they're providing, they're providing space for labs maybe, or, or something like that. There's debt forgiveness, all these different things. Okay. Where's the majority of their money coming from? Intuitive Surgicals, the top one, okay? Let's look at uh, UCSF. UCSF, surprisingly, it's only $735,000 million, uh, $735, in general payments, but $2.5 million in research, okay? Now, let's contrast that. That should tell you the difference between those two. Memorial Herman, $1.2 million in general payments, $31,000 in research payments versus UCSF. 735,000 in general payments, 2.5 million in research payments. Can you tell, like, when you follow the money, you're going to find the truth. Remember that I tell you that. You follow the money, you're going to find the truth in this industry, okay? Now, where did a lot of that money come from, okay? Well, it's, it's a variety of things. It's a very big mix, but look, 64%, $470,000 came from compensation for services other than consulting, which means, like, speaking engagements, educational seminars, and everything. So I would, I would see like, they might be very big, good about like doing sponsored grand rounds, those kind of things, right? This is how you have to think, especially as a marketing person. Okay. Um, and now let's look at one last one, UT Southwestern, UT Southwestern receive $62,000 in general payments, $6.1 million in research. Okay. Where did that money come from? Um, the majority of it came from Intuitive Surgical, but only three hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. So they take money from a lot of different people because, like, they if they if they got oh, and this is for general payments, by the way, not for research. So for general payments, half of it came from Intuitive Surgical. For research, unfortunately, unfortunately, it doesn't show me that, right? But all you know, the other thing you can see is that for teaching hospitals and individuals, if you scroll down, okay, you can see uh, the payments that were made out, right? So this gentleman uh, received uh, a royalty or license for 4,900 4, bucks from Lifespine. If you click that payment, right, it'll tell you exactly the details of what this is for, right? So the associated products, everything, okay? Let's take a look at um, the gentleman from, who's banking it, bankrolling from Medtronic, got $20, $20 million in a royalty or license. Let's see what that was for. Okay. That was for, let's see. Okay. So it does not list the product. So I guess in that case, it doesn't have to be listed. Let's, let's see if we can find something else. Uh, let's see. This one from Intuitive Surgical, four thousand bucks. What is this for? Associated product, Da Vinci Surgical System. It tells you about the type of product, device, category, everything. Right. Start living in these databases. So, with that being said, let me stop the screen share and come back. So, in summary, right, make it part of your workflow to go to Open Payments. So again, it's the the website is OpenPaymentsData.CMS.gov. Okay. And look up the hospital that you're trying to sell into and look up the individuals you're dealing with. And by the way, just so you know, everybody's in here. It's not just physicians. So if you got a physician with a physician's assistant, right? You should look that physician's assistant up. Nurse anesthetist, 
uh, certified midwife, whatever. You can find as many of these people in here as possible. So again, there's NPPs, which is non-physician practitioner, right? Look them up. Why? Well, obviously, if you have, let's say, a non-physician practitioner who's making a, you know, a decent amount of money from one company and you're a competitor, do you think that person's going to, you know, make sure that your product brochures are delivered to the vision? You think that in behind closed doors, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I think we should totally use this product. Definitely not. And again, none of this is malicious, but like, keep in mind, like when money is involved, anything is justifiable, right? And just to be frank, because, you know, people, when they think about like a situation like this, they think of like unethical behavior and everything. Most products are like marginally better than, 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 than each other, right? It's very rare that you have something that's like truly transformative and a completely different. That's just the you know nature of this. And so if you're selling a product that's just marginally better, or just like a me too product, right? The way you stand out is finding ways such as like through great, great customer service, great, great business acumen, the relationship you have, like, you know, as as big as I am in terms of tech savviness, right, and business acumen, business is still very old school. You want to do business with people you like. And I've spoken to surgeons many times where I asked him, like, why is it that you use, let's say, like I spoke to a spine surgeon the other day. Uh, he uses, I'm not going to mention the company's name, but for he uses robotics and he um, he uses a certain set of implants, right? and not the company whose robot he uses. And I asked him why, and he said, simply put, he's like, their implants are fine. He's like, but their reps suck at the implant side. They're not very reliable and they've, you know, and I don't like the service. It's like that simple, right? So anyways, spend time in this database, leverage it, okay? And, you know, for feedback, you know, tag me in some of your posts on LinkedIn, send me some messages. I wanna hear from you all, and more importantly, if you're listening to this, let's say on YouTube or Spotify, look below, there's a comment section, drop a comment there. I read all those comments. I get a lot of ideas from those. So tell me what you think about this episode. Tell me about what kind of things you want me covered. And, um, you know, maybe we do this more as a case, case reporting thing, right? So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I thank you all. We are the number one show in MedTech because of you. So I really appreciate it. Be sure to give us five stars and write a review. And as always, we'll see you next time. Happy selling. Go crush it out there. Thank you for enjoying another epic episode of The State of MedTech. If you're feeling inspired and love this episode, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you never miss an episode. And be sure to give us five stars and write a short review because that helps more people discover this amazing community of ours. If you're a company who has a executive that you'd like to be on the show or perhaps you want to sponsor one of the episodes, shoot us an email at hello at Take care. See you next time.